Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are going to start work on the bloom portion of my little lamp project here that I'm working on. Now, uh, there's multiple ways that you can do this. You can forge out a bloom however you like. Uh, but the method I'm going to just show you here is mainly just doing it out of a piece of flat plate. Because I found that this will be the economy of time here. So what you can see here that I've already laid out is essentially what I'm looking for. It's going to be a four petal uh, shade here for the lamp. And, you know, I'm going to take and forge some seams in it and uh, try to give it a little bit of dimension and character. So some of the things to point out here, uh, the way that I found center is first off, I figured out what I needed, like six inch square, and that's what this is here. And then what I did is I drew diagonals from corner to corner, and then that gives me my center point. But then I also took and then brought up my, my speed square and went from left to right and front to back. Now, I did this all in soapstone just so you could see it. Otherwise, I would have just done it with a, you know, a pretty much a scratch all or a scribe. <clears throat> so I would have done that. Then I went one step further. So I need a recess where the bulb is going to be. So once I figured out kind of the general dimension and what I'm looking for here, I kind of just drew in some, you know, some 45s degree cuts to give me some space for my leaves a little bit and then that's essentially it but the next thing that I went ahead and did is I took a pair of dividers and I found the center of this point and went ahead and scribed me out two circles now what this is supposed to give me is essentially a bullseye of where to take and hit in this leaf pattern blank here itself so the inner circle is where I'm aiming to take and drive back and then the outer circle is where I'm wanting to cut my lines actually back to. So these are kind of, these are fake. I want them to come back a little further to give the leaves more gap in between them. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now one of the things I'm going to do that you'll see in the video is you'll see I'll just take and go way off course on this. You have to remember you want to get it generally all nice and even, but this is supposed to be an organic form. So it is okay if you take a little artistic liberty when it comes to shaping your petals when you first start at flat plate. So I'm going to do this on the plasma cutter. <clears throat> the way I laid this out is to where you could actually just use a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder to cut all this out of a piece of flat plate. So this is very easily done with that. I just happen to have the luxury of a plasma cutter, so I'm just going to go ahead and plasma cut this out. Um, and then we will actually get to forging the petal itself. Okay, everybody, here we are. I'm going to go ahead and cut up this petal now. Now, like I said, you guys can easily do this with an angle grinder. Uh, bandsaw, whatever you have available to you. An angle grinder with a cutoff wheel will work just fine for cutting out these blanks like this. I just happen to have a plasma cutter, and so this really helps me on the efficiency side of things, so I choose to do it. Now, after it's plasma cut, it'll leave these little slag pieces on there, and you got to beat those off because those are pretty high carbon. And then just going to clean up the cut lines. You know, pretty simple stuff. As you can see, I went to the angle grinder anyhow. And we're just trying to take and get this material all prepped up and ready. Okay, everybody, here we are to this point. So I've got all the edges cleaned up. I went ahead, I didn't show this part, but I did it on the belt sander. I went ahead and just cleaned up all the various edges there. Uh, took any of the burrs off from the rough grinding. And there's our blank. So that's what we're going to start with. So as you can notice, this thing is not sterile at all. Uh, there's no part of this that is exactly the same. None of the curvatures in here and this and that. 
And that's going to be fine because we're about to do a lot of heavy shaping to this item. And so I want the shade to look more natural than look uh, sterile. I, I like the natural element of the bloom. I want the bloom to really look good with lots of texture and lots of character. So that's what I'm going for with this one. Now, if you want it perfect and you want it clean and like perfectly smooth lines, go for it. More power to you. This particular one, I just wanted to have this organic feel to it. As I have plenty of other clean lines and stuff in the project, I want to break up the monotony of that a little bit. So next step, we're going to go ahead and throw this in the gas forge. I'm going to go ahead and get the whole piece heated up, and I'm going to start hammer texturing the, each one of the uh, pedal portions itself. Okay, here's our first heat. So, our main objective here is to just hammer the pedals themselves. Try not to hit in the center, as this will look bad. We don't need all that texture continuing down in there. We're going to blend that with the other bit of the hammer, or essentially the flat of the face of the hammer instead. When you're spreading these leaves or these petals, make sure to work at the edges first and then work all out the center. This way this will help reduce any sort of cupping that you may have. And now we're going to our cupping tool that I made in another video. And I'm using a really rounded face hammer to take and do most of the shaping here. This way we can take and get kind of a bulbous look to each one of the petals. This is all really going to add up in the long run, as you can see. So now we're going to give it a straighten a little bit. And now you can kind of start seeing how some of that texture is really going to play out. This is going to be really nice. So now we're going to sink the center of the shade itself. Being very careful not to ruin the texture or get in any galling on the actual petals of the shade. And then we're just going to continue to refine it until we get it done here. Okay, everyone, time to catch you up. So, I've got my bloom completely shaped now, the way I want it. There's our depression for our light socket. As you can tell, let me adjust the focus here, ladies and gentlemen. As you can tell, it's got quite the nice texture. Now, at this stage, it looks really rough. And all iron work starts out this way. It's going to look really rough at this stage, especially whenever you use a gas forge. For some reason they just tend to scale things a little bit more. It's mainly because of the air that's getting pumped through them. But, you know, so as you can see I got a lot of cleanup work to do inside of that and on the outside. So we'll set this aside for right now because this is only one portion of it. Go ahead and set that away. Now, let's see if I can get it refocused. I'm going to orient this right. There you guys can see it. Okay. So now what I've done is I'm going to create the calic or the back part, you know, what would be kind of like the bud that would open up. Now, this is really, this isn't accurate to size. It's not to portray a real calic. It is to just take and give the essence of it. So... As you can see here, center punch marked it. This is a four inch square. And then I went from corner to corner to lay out my layout lines. And then 12 degrees off center, that way and that way, is what created those petals there. Oh. So if you put your, if you put your speed square on there, it has degrees on there, on hip vol. It's you can take and come off center 12 degrees. So from here to here is 12 degrees. From here to here is 12 degrees. All the way around. 
So what it'll be after we get done forging it, well, who knows, but it will look textured and look pretty. So I'll go ahead and get this cut out and then I will form this little bit and then that will be it. And here we go again with the plasma cutter, taking and cutting out our little calic here. I tell you what, guys, I can't tell you enough how much efficiency a hand torch like this, a plasma cutter, can really speed up some of these decorative ironwork jobs. It really makes it handy. And we'll go ahead and clean up all that slag edges with the belt sander. It was easier than with the angle grinder this time around. And the next step, we're going to go ahead and form this up after we get all those smooth. I'm switching to a much smaller cross pin, still hammering in the same direction as the little blade. As you can see, it takes a lot of little hammer strokes and a good amount of accuracy. So this way you don't beat the death out of your anvil face. If you're not comfortable with this, just use a mild steel block for this. Now we'll take it to its stages of shaping, a little scroll, and we're done. Okay, everyone. So here we are. We have everything pretty much getting ready to be assembled. So I finished up the bloom. I'm shooting this with the wide angle lens, so things are a little pixelated here, but sorry about that. So we finished up the bloom, all the components for that. There's the calic portion. It's going to sit on there like so. Can give you a little preview of that. That'll make it look a little more original. Our stem work for the lamps done. Our leaf work down lows done. And our base is done. So, next part will be the welding. I'll do a video on that. We'll go ahead and weld all this up. We'll do the assembly work. And then the video just following that, if you're watching in the future, these will all be linked up in the description and at the end of this video. The one after that will be the wiring video and how I will wire this all up and hide all the wires and make this thing look intelligent, like it was intelligently done. So anyways, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and uh, I greatly appreciate all my subscribers. Thank you all for taking the time to watch. God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.